Salutations everybody, it is Maddie here today sitting down for a Bioware news update. Things have been steadily building up over the last couple of weeks now, and we have a batch of news to discuss. None of it really that positive. Things are looking really bad right now for Bioware in some instances, specifically its long-running MMORPG that I've talked about quite a bit here on the channel, Star Wars The Old Republic, and the timing couldn't be any stranger because I've been toiling away on a 2022 review for this game, and it just received some of its biggest news yet. We're also going to be talking about some new hirings, which I think we could be optimistic about, as well as some surprising vacancies within the company. There is a lot to discuss overall about the state of Bioware, and while it's much appreciated that they are being more communicative with their new leadership, with Gary McKay as the GM, I can't help but feel like we're still a long ways away from any type of golden era of Bioware again. So with that, welcome one, welcome all to a Bioware news update. Thank you so much for lending me some of your time today. Let's start off with the top of the order, I feel, because it all trickles down from here. So, as I said, Star Wars The Old Republic is a long-running MMO for Bioware, and it's honestly one of their most profitable games. There's a reason it's hung around for so long with the expansions, the memberships, the consistent addition of content for at least a stretch of time, not so much anymore. It is doing pretty well, all things considered, but it has really started to fall off a cliff in the last couple of years, which again, I'll go into more in my personal re-review of the game. However, the big surprise was when one of the directors of the game said peace out. So this information comes from GameInformer.com where they report, Star Wars The Old Republic director leaves, Bioware announces commitment to the MMORPG. In a blog post on the official Bioware website, Star Wars The Old Republic creative director Charles Boyd announced his departure. Despite the sad news, the studio announced its commitment to the space opera franchise, commending other leaders on the design team, from the narrative director Ashley Rule to the lead producer Eric Musco, and stating that the remaining developers will carry forward our vision for the game. The blog post ends with a few heartfelt words from Boyd. Even after almost 16 years, I still can't fully believe how lucky I've been to work on Star Wars The Old Republic. As always, there are some exciting things in the works for the future of SWOTOR. Storylines and planets and gameplay and characters that I can't wait to see come to life. I'm really looking forward to experience them all right alongside our players. So to the team, to our longtime partners at Lucasfilm, and to all of you, thank you so, so much for this amazing journey. I may be moving on from the project, but the Old Republic will never leave my heart. So around the end of last year was what was supposed to be a big expansion for Star Wars The Old Republic, and that's where a lot of the alarms began to sound for the SWOTOR fan base because the content drops had become more and more scarce. And when the next expansion arrived, it was very quick. Manon was very underwhelming for a lot of people. It was extremely disappointing. They ran right through it in a heartbeat. And that was it. Not only that, but some folks had some issues with the gameplay overhaul and what it did for the combat system. There was already some growing pains for a lot of people because the game used to be much more difficult many years ago, about five to six years ago. Now it is much, much easier to dive into because it sort of shifted its focus to be more of a single player approachable MMO with a lot of story driven elements, which is one of the main reasons I do like it, but I understand why it's pushed a lot of people away. So all in all, the MMO isn't in a horrible state. You could go play it and enjoy it quite a bit. I do recommend it, but it does seem to sort of be entering that life support stage where major exits are occurring, where the big expansion feels woefully undercooked compared to what the competitors are doing with their just standard DLC. You know, think about Final Fantasy XIV and when a major expansion for that drops, not a DLC, right? Not a patch or an update, a expansion. When an expansion lands, it is a game changer. It feels like a whole new game, adding dozens of hours of content that you've been waiting for, you're paying for it, it feels worthwhile. And that's not to say that SWOTOR isn't that. For a lot of people, it wasn't though. And I think when you start to look at SWOTOR versus its competitors, it will, I think, continue to hang around, but it is in desperate need of what I would say is a relaunch. I think a big expansion with an announcement that they're coming to consoles, would be enough to reinvigorate the player base. Right now, Bioware's commitment feels more like we're here to keep this game alive and continue to make money off of it, but we'll probably be moving on within the next set of years. 
I wouldn't be too surprised to eventually see things wind down, especially in the face of Final Fantasy XIV, Elder Scrolls Online seemingly engulfing the MMO market and Amazon striking gold on occasion with like New World at launch, really absorbing a lot of MMO players and pulling them off of current projects. I just feel like Star Wars The Old Republic, I've said it for a while, just needs to relaunch. It just needs like a 2.0 or a second coming or sequel. I don't know. Something of the level of Realm Reborn, right? Where it's just like we're starting over a new MMO from scratch set in the Old Republic universe. Because, I mean, it is getting on in age. Think about when it launched back in, I believe it was 2010. I remember I was in high school and all I wanted was to get a gaming PC that was selling SWOTOR as a part of the bundle. Because, of course, yeah, I love the Old Republic. It's my favorite era of Star Wars. It's part of my favorite game of all time. Like, yeah, I wanted this game bad when it first came out. I'd be watching raid videos online and whatnot. And yeah, I, I remember that was high school. I think it was like junior year of high school for me. I was like 16, I'm 27 now. This game's been around for a while, as many MMOs are, and I hope it continues to hang around. I'm not wishing for its death, but it does need to evolve. And seeing major exits like this is not necessarily encouraging. So that's what's going on with SWOTOR. That brings us into our next stitch of news here, which is Bioware continuing to hire. And some of these hirings are actually, I don't wanna say discouraging, cause I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer here, but when you look at them and you see which games they're hiring for in significant positions, you'd think for certain games deep in development, they would have some answers here. So when you look at the Bioware hiring post they put on their Twitter account, you can see things like Mass Effect doing a lot of hiring, right? Okay, the environment director, but Dragon Age is doing a ton of hiring. They're looking for things like senior effects artists, technical animators, world animators, gameplay animators, senior character artists, they're looking for gameplay designers for the creatures. They're looking for a world design lead, a lead position. They're looking for a producer for Dragon Age. I don't wanna just read a job listing post and assume the worst, but I can't help but do that when this game was reported to come out at the end of next year. And they specify here on the hiring post when it's a contract-based position versus like a full-time position. And only one post did say that this was a contract-based position. So these are holes they are looking to fill in their process. And I imagine many more people are leaving Bioware than we are currently aware of, because that is a lot of vacancies for a game deep in development. Dragon Age, again, is supposed to come out at the end of next year. I could totally see if there's this many vacancies here, like you need a producer on your game. You need a world design lead on your game. You need as many animators as you can get so that the action plays on screen. You need effects artists. Like all of these pieces are extremely important in AAA production. And if you don't have those answers or multiple of those answers, right? Because I'm sure some of these positions are filled as they should be, but you need multiple people within a role to make the AAA engine chug along. And if you're not there, I could see this slipping into early 2024. That wouldn't be surprising. You know, another series I love getting a significant delay go figure, <laughs> you know, I might be cursed, I don't know, I feel bad for y'all who like the same franchises as I do, but to me, when I saw this hiring post, I think it's good that they are hiring in the sense that, like, there's people that are trying to bring into the business that Bioware as a whole hasn't given up, uh, but to see those vacancies for a game that's supposed to be relatively close, relatively deep in development, I do find that kind of disheartening. Whereas if I saw that many positions for Mass Effect, I'd be like, okay, this game's a ways off. We're not gonna see Mass Effect for a long while, I would assume. That's fine, because we know Dragon Age has to come first. Okay, cool. But our next bit of news has to do with Mass Effect, though. And it is a positive one, so let's change the vibe for a little bit before we, we end on a, <clears throat> a more negative note. This comes from Video Games Chronicle, where they report the writer behind Deus Ex has joined Bioware. Her name is Mary DeMauro. This was confirmed over at Mike Gamble's Twitter account where he writes, oh, hey, I'm really excited to let you know that Mary DeMauro will be joining the Mass Effect team as senior narrative director. You've seen her work in Guardians of the Galaxy and Deus Ex to name a few. She is amazing. Okay, who is Mary DeMauro, you may be asking. This name may not be familiar to you, but if you watched the Game Awards last year, this will be familiar to you. She took home the Best Narrative Award at the Game Awards for 2021 for Guardians of the Galaxy. And Guardians of the Galaxy was one of the best surprises of last year from Iodos Montreal. Uh, one of the main reasons for that was its storytelling. It was deep, 
emotional. There was a somewhat level of choice there. Very, very elusive level of choice there. Uh, nothing crazy. A couple of alternative outcomes. But deep, heartfelt writing. Impactful character writing. And I think after Andromeda, that is what Mass Effect desperately needs, is the deep, heartfelt characters, making a squad truly feel like a squad. Mary seems like a true talent. I think this is a perfect fit for Bioware, and this is encouraging for how they are trying to map out what Mass Effect could be by hiring the right talent to achieve such a thing. I'm just hoping they don't borrow the RPG elements from Guardians of the Galaxy, because to tell you the truth, there wasn't much of that. It wasn't trying to be an RPG, but it definitely had that making choices throughout the story type of vibe without there actually being true choice and consequence. So I'm just hoping Bioware doesn't take a page out of that book, but I digress. Enough dooming from me. Just got to say, a fan of this hiring, I think this is encouraging for the future. And that would be par for the course that Bioware has a better grip on what's going on with Mass Effect than Dragon Age, because to me, Dragon Age has been this up and down roller coaster where Mass Effect has been on a steady incline, Andromeda happened, but otherwise one, two, and three just progressively got better. So to me, it would make sense that they would treat their baby better. With that, we got one last bit of news, and this one's just hilarious. I just had to shout it out because it's unbelievable. So. Well, maybe it's actually not that unbelievable. Now, now that I think about it, I, I think you could believe it, but the price that this game is being sold at, I've never seen before, so that's why I say it is kind of unbelievable. It was posted on Reddit, it was posted on TikTok, Anthem selling for a penny. A penny. Think about that, a penny, not a buck, not two bucks, not five bucks, a single penny. There was a sticker there, and apparently this girl who went to GameStop, actually the employee said, here, I'll put the penny in the register for you, and paid for her to take the game. This is apparently called pennying out, and what it means is that this is one step away from literally being thrown in the trash. That's how little units they're moving for Anthem. That's how little value they find in the product. <laughs> and that's how colossal of a failure it was. And that should be the exclamation point to Bioware to, unless it's, you know, again, Star Wars The Old Republic 2 or something like that, never go back to service games or online games of any kind because we have now seen what happens. Hopefully EA has seen what happens. We saw the reports of a Black Panther game and that's being built off the back of their belief in single player games based off what they saw in Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order and they're doing a Jedi Fallen Order sequel with Star Wars Jedi Survivor. So yeah, you know what? Like I think collectively everyone has realized within that group, the numbers speak for themselves. Anthem should have never happened. It's a shame it had to happen to realize that. It had to be this big of a failure to realize it, but it is what it is, and I'm just happy this chapter should be behind us. If your game is selling for a penny, look, we've seen a lot of failures in our industry. Fallout 76 isn't selling for a penny. Cyberpunk went down to 10 bucks, and that was crazy. A penny, though? A penny? You're practically giving the game away. That's literally a business saying, we don't need to make money off of this. We just need to get rid of it. We have stock and we just need to get rid of it. That's that's like talking down to a clearance sale, like going a level below, selling for a penny. That's insane. Anyway, that's all I got for you in this Bioware news update. A lot of crazy revelations here between Anthem selling for a penny, what's happening with SWOTOR and its steady decline, and some of these vacancies over at the Dragon Age team. So I'm looking forward to seeing your thoughts on this in the comments down below. Do fire away. Other than that, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram. Those links are in the description down below. And a big thank you to all the patrons, all the members who continue to support the hell out of the content here. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.